Have you ever seen a line or a gap on the long bridges, flyovers, slabs or any concrete road and wonder what are those gaps and why we use them or keep them? Then this video is for you. We will definitely answer your questions in this video. But let's start with introduction. Hello everyone, my name is Vinay and I completed my bachelor's in civil engineering and if you are visiting my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe our channel and also click the bell icon for getting instant notifications of our latest videos. So without wasting your time, let's start a video. So what are those gaps or lines on the concrete which you see on the roads or on the slabs? The answer is joints. But what exactly joints in concrete means? First of all, concrete is not a ductile material. It doesn't stretch or bend without breaking. But concrete does move. It shrinks, it expands and also different parts of a building move in different ways. This is where joints come into play. When concrete moves, if it is tied to another structure or even to itself, we get what's called restraint force. This restraint force causes tensile forces and invariably leads to cracking. So we use these joints to prevent cracking of concrete. Now, what are the types of joints in concrete? Joints in concrete are construction joints, expansion joints, contraction joints, and isolation joints. These joints are placed in concrete slabs and pavements at regular intervals to prevent development of cracks in concrete. Let us discuss the joints in concrete and also where we use it. First, let us discuss construction joints. On many jobs, there will be starting and stopping points. You won't pour the entire slab all at once. That's where you will place a construction joint. But construction joints must be designed in order to allow displacements between both sides of the slab. That means old slab and also new slab has to allow displacements from the both sides. So they have to transfer flexible stresses produced in the slab by external loads. Construction joints must allow horizontal displacements right angle to the joint surface that is normally caused by thermal and shrinkage movements. At the same time, they must not allow vertical or rotational displacements. These displacements causes breakage of the concrete. Next, types of construction joints. There were mainly four types of construction joints. One is butt type construction joint. Next, tongue and groove construction joint butt type construction joint with dovels and butt type construction joint with tie bars. You can see the details of the joints in the given picture and next expansion joints. Expansion joints are placed in concrete to prevent expansive cracks formed due to temperature changes. Concrete undergoes expansion due to high temperatures when in confined boundary, so which leads to cracks. Expansion joints are provided in slabs, pavements, buildings, bridges, and other structures. The expansion joints are normally located between sections of bridges, paving slabs, railway tracks, and piping systems. In the concrete block construction, the expansion joints are expressed as control joints. There are mainly four types of expansion joints. Bridge expansion joint, masonry expansion joint, railway expansion joint and pipe expansion joint. Next we will talk about contraction joints. When concrete is placed due to shrinkage, creep and thermal movement, concrete tends to reduce in size due to which small cracks are formed in concrete at weak zones. So contraction joints in concrete are provided at regular intervals to form a weak plane so that the cracks are formed at the joints but not in undesired places. What a contraction joint really is, in the end it is a crack in the slab that we force to follow a line of our own choosing. 
contraction joint is placed in the location of highest concentration of tensile stresses resulting from shrinkages are expected like concrete pavements slabs walls floors dams canal linings bridges retaining walls etc they are generally between 1/4 to 1/3 the depth of the slab and typically spaced every 3.1 to 15 meters next isolation joints isolation joints have one very simple purpose they completely isolate the slab from something else that something else can be a wall or a column or a drain pipe isolation joints will reduce compressive stresses that develop at t section and unsymmetrical intersections ramps bridges building foundations drainage inlets manholes and anywhere differential movement between the pavement and a structure may takes place isolation joint should be half to 1 inch wide that means 12 to 25 mm wide and finally we have to note one point greater widths may cause excessive movement in isolation joints so we have to be careful while providing width of these joints so in this video we have learned what is a joint and what are the types of joints and why we use them if you find this information useful please share with your friends and please do subscribe our channel and see you in the next video thank you